what if you have the unique strategies needed to make your dreams a reality and to also make all the incredible preaching that is uh, literally spoken behind our podiums a living testimony, something that you experience in reality. That it doesn't just remain a transcendental message, something mystical and spiritual that you get hyped about, get excited about, but when you come home, uh, you don't have the means to demonstrate, manifest it. And so the sermons has become something that helps to get you, emo- get you into emotional frenzy but you don't have any pragmatic uh, systems to make it into a reality. What if your life now becomes a demonstration, a living evidence of what God has promised you? That you don't just talk about what is going to be, but you have a a system, a step-by-step processes to be able to make it happen at your own pace according to uh, the unique strategy that you possess. My name is Randolph Manton. I'm, I'm so determined to help believers to make manifest their prophetic promise, to get the workable systems, the strategies, uh, step-by-step processes that will help them to be able to get what God has ordained for them. A lot of prophecies that we receive, a lot of divine promises from the scriptures, has remained mystical and spiritual. We talk about it, we preach it, we get excited about it, but many, many believers are still left stranded in the context of the reality of what they expect. They don't know why. They've prayed more, fasted more, intensified their pursuit for the things of the spirit. They, they've given so much and they the needed breakthrough is eluding them. And, and nobody is addressing these issues. So people are so tired of their expectation. Their hope, which is deferred, has made it their heart sick. They, they, you begin to see a lot of people who are sitting in our appeal so sullen, so discouraged, but they are hiding such deformity, spiritual deformity, where it, pious spirituality, but you can see they are not happy. Promises that has delayed for 10 years and five years, and and we kind of wonder what is going on. What must we do to be able to make our prophetic promise, the scriptural promise is a reality. How are we going to come into the fullness of the greatness that God has ordained for us? We talk big behind our podiums. In reality, we are not living it. We We don't know how to be able to come into it. So the more you press it and you you begin to question the man of God, the more they they literally get you to intensify those things that is not working. The system that is still not working, we keep on trying to intensify or recycle it in another form, but it is not working. And then somebody has to be bold and transparent enough to, to confront it and to diagnose the circumstances and situation to find out why is it that they gave you a prophecy last year and said this is your year. And, and the prophecy was revelatory. It was exciting. It was specific. Uh, it was exceptional. You got excited about it, but at the end of the year, nothing happened because nobody told you that the prophecy will not manifest by itself, that you have to cooperate. There are some things you have to do to be able to make manifest what God has said. In the same manner, we notice that a lot of people are frustrated in our churches because we get them excited about the promises of God's word, but we don't give them the steps, the strategies to make it happen. And so in this series of teachings, I want to to really confront the diagnose it and to bring a remedy that is going to help you to unleash 
your potential for greatness and give you the step by step to make your dreams a reality and to achieve everything that God has said concerning your life. Also, you're going to learn what it takes to be able to take a scriptural promise and identify, literally make it your own and manifest it in your life so that it will not be something that you get excited about. And yes, there is a gap between your excitement and the reality. It's about time we make things happen. Now, for me to really get into it today, I just want you to take a moment, watch this advertisement, and listen to this beautiful music. I'll come back, and we're going to find out what must we do to be able to make manifest our prophetic prayer, even though we don't have any strategy, any idea. You are, you are literally, you, are, you don't have what it takes to make it happen. You, you don't have the strategy. Today, I'm going to show you what you must do to be able to access the information, the strategy, the resources you need to make manifest what God has ordained for you. Don't leave because your life will not be the same. Stay with me. I'll be right back so we can get into God's word. You give life. such an opportunity to communicate divine truth that has the ability to help you discover the potential in you and to unleash it, uh, monetize it, accelerate yourself to the divine promise that God has ordained for you. And today we want to talk about what it will take to be able to come into the manifestation of what God has ordained for you. What if you don't have the resources, you don't have the money, you don't know you don't have any know-how, you don't have any, anything, but God has given you an incredible promise and it seems like you are 
you, are, you don't have what it takes. You are ignorant of a strategy. You don't have the connections, the relationship to be able, and the resources to make it happen. That is what I want to talk about. So please turn your Bibles with me to the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 26. I want to extract a truth, a concept, and, and principles from this narrative that is going to help you to be able to achieve your dreams, fulfill your prophetic promise, and live the life that God has ordained for you. So please turn your Bible with me. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. We're going to read from verse 26 to 40. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. In Luke chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible says, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Heal, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father God, father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, thy handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste, into a city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. When you look at this narrative and we begin to see how God gave a prophetic promise of, to Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, and told her that she was going to be pregnant with the son of the Most High God, and this son is going to have the government of God, is going to have the throne of his great-great-great-grandfather David and his throne there will be no end. He's going to reign on earth forever. And it is an incredible promise uh, and uh, an astounding revelation from, the God, from God. The Bible says that the angel told him that this one that was going to be seated in her, the pregnancy, is going to be the son of the Most High God. He's going to be great. It shall be known. Incredible promises. Mary knew that what the angel was saying was true. He was not questioning the validity of the promise. He was not questioning whether God is serious about it. But when he observes her circumstance and situation, there was something blatantly obvious. She was a virgin, and she had not had any intercourse with the man yet. He has no relationship on that level with the man yet. And so look at the condition and the circumstance that she was in. She needed to find out that the promise that she was given, she was not questioning that. 
She believed in the integrity of the promise. She believed in what God has said. She has embraced the prophetic word, but from the state where she is and the condition that the circumstance she was in and to what God was talking about as a prophetic word, there was a serious gap and it, it needed to be bridged so that that prophecy will become a reality. It's so interesting and surprising that God will literally give a promise to a virgin that is supposed to give birth to a baby. He gives a promise to a virgin that is not married yet. She's engaged to Joseph, but they are not married. She has no intercourse yet. God is giving a prophecy to a woman who was a virgin, inexperienced, has not gone through that process before, has no knowledge of how it is possible, and there was such a deficiency in her life concerning how to make manifest the prophetic promise. And yes, sir, God did not care about all this and give the prophecy anyway. So therefore, you have to understand there is a possibility that God can give you a promise and a prophetic word in your inexperienced state, in your deficiency of your resources, in your circumstance that is so contrary to what God has promised. That doesn't stop God from giving you what he has promised you. You can be empty in your pocket. You have no experience. Things are not going right. And yet still, God will give you a prophecy that is literally beyond the capacity, the know-how, your expertise. And yes, sir, he's telling you, this is what I'm going to do. So you have to understand, God doesn't look at your circumstance to decide the prophecy he has to give to you. He doesn't look at your state of being to determine the capacity or the ability to manifest what he's promised you. He looks at his sovereignty, his openness, and who he is as God to determine how he prophesies to you. Mary is a virgin, is engaged, but has no experience yet. Doesn't even know what to do to make this prophecy happen. So in such state, Mary had audacity to ask the angel, how can this thing be? You know, you know my condition and circumstance. You know, seeing that, I know not a man. For me to be able to take a seed, that's what Mary is saying. For her to take a seed and to be able to bring forth a baby who's going to be called the son of the Most High God, she needs a man. And for now, she doesn't have a man. She doesn't have what it takes to make manifest the prophetic promise. How many of you watching me and you're wondering that God has given you a prophetic word? God has given you a whole lot of prophetic promises in the way. You've got a revelation, you got the scripture interpretation and you are aware of what God expects you to have as your heritage and all these things is something that you don't know what to do and so you are left in the state of expectation but no bridge to walk on to the reality of what God has said concerning so you are literally confused you you don't know what to do but today I want you to let you I want you to let you know that there is a way for you to make manifest what God has ordained for you. The Lord, the angel said to Mary, the spirit of the most high God, the spirit of God will come upon you and he's going to help you to take a seat. Think about it, the spirit of God. So what we have to understand, every prophecy that God gives you, the spirit of God has a role to play. God doesn't give you a prophecy and leave you alone. The Spirit of God is going to confirm the prophecy. It's going to help you to make manifest the prophecy. But he plays a spiritual role, a spiritual impartation. He does the impossible. He literally creates the opportunity, the scenarios. But that is not alone. The Bible says, the angel said to Mary, the Spirit of God is going to come upon you and you are going to take that seat. But he went further and said something very strange. He says, and Elizabeth, your cousin, who everybody thought would not be able to give birth to a child, was barren. Everybody said she was barren. It was known in the vicinity that she lived, in the city, and everybody knew that Elizabeth was old, the husband was old, and she could not have children. She was barren. But the angel disclosed a secret of a miracle 
to marry her by telling her that this cousin of yours, what everybody thought was barren, is now pregnant, six months pregnant. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now, remember the question of Mary was, how can this thing be? And so the answer that the angel was giving to Mary was to give her what it takes to make the prophetic promise a reality. One, the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. That is the aspect of God, the supernatural, to make it happen. But that will not be alone because in that, you will also need an Elizabeth. He says the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. He's going to play his role of the supernatural, create the scenario, activate the blessings, stimulate something in you, stir you up into opportunities and strategies, but that is not alone. Then he says to him, you are looking for the knowledge, the practicality, the step-by-step -step process that as a human, you can follow to make that prophecy a reality. And this is how you're going to get. He says to them, God is not going to give you a direct information or revelation or step-by-step -step processes for you to be independent, to literally harness that information and do it by yourself. He says, and Elizabeth was barren. Now, why will the angel mention the name of Elizabeth? The reason why the angel threw in the name of Elizabeth in their conversation was to stimulate something in Mary to understand, for her to be able to get the information, the understanding, the strategy, whatever it takes to literally make manifest the pregnancy and to give birth to what the, the angel has said, she would need to learn something from Elizabeth. Elizabeth, who was called barren, now is pregnant. Her story has changed. El Elizabeth has an expertise, a resources, something that she's gone through. She was called barren, put to shame, a taboo in the community. She has literally gone through a process of gossip and a whole lot of looks among the women that gossip in the community. Things were not going around. But Elizabeth has been able to sustain and do the process, gone through the fate uh, process to be able to conceive. And so Mary, there are some things you're going to need. But God is not going to give you that information directly. You will need to go to Elizabeth. See, you have to understand, there are many of us that God has given to you a prophetic promise. And yesterday, you want the, uh, the stimulation, the impartation. You, you want God to do something supernatural over, uh, uh, over your life. And yes, the Holy Spirit will do it. But the Holy Spirit is not going to deny you of your responsibility to cooperate with God. He's going to direct you to human beings that he wants you to submit to and to learn from them so that whatever he has ordained for you will be made manifest. And so with every vision that you have, there is an Elizabeth that you need to go sit under, learn and process some things over there so that you can come into the fullness of the greatness that God has ordained for you. Yes, understand the prophecy says you are going to be great. Yes, you are going to rule and have influence. Yes, maybe you are too big for your prophecy because you think that the greatness of what God has said concerning you does, it excuses you from going solo, humbling yourself to go sit under somebody and learn from them. You will need an Elizabeth. Because without your Elizabeth, although there will be a spiritual impartation, the awareness of the blessings, uh, God has given you the revelation, but you will delay the process and not manifest. Some of you, you decided you can do it by yourself. You don't need anybody. You just want an intimate relationship with God. Uh, and you just, want, you just want to walk with God. You don't need anybody. You are deceiving yourself. It does not work like that. With every vision that God has given to a Mary, there is an Elizabeth to mentor her to make manifest what she's pregnant with. And, and, and the other thing you have to understand, you don't pick your Elizabeth. It is the pregnancy that you carry that determines the Elizabeth God picks for your destiny 
is going to determine the pastor that God is going to give to you. That's what the Bible says. I will give you pastors after my heart who will feed you with knowledge. You don't pick your pastor. I don't care whether the pastor is 100 miles and...